Today's story is brought to you by the letter D for Dayquil. So I apologize if this, this kind of goes a little bad because I'm sick. So it's going to sound a little weird today. But I think the story will more than make up for the crap audio of my voice sounding all nasally. Today's story is going to be about explosions, blood, and saving a life. I think you'll enjoy it. And as always, I'm not going to give details. I'm going to kind of keep it as vague as possible so I don't get sued because I like not getting sued. A little setup to this. I'm not going to say where we were, but there was a large group of us who had just got done with what we called a warm base. Still don't really know where that name come from as it's just we took a bunch of people, took over a compound, and stayed there for a couple days and ran patrols. The name warm base is just makes no sense to me. I also don't really care. It made no sense, so whatever. So we stayed at this place for, I think it was four days, and we decided, all right, we've had enough. Let's get out of here and go back to our, our cop, which is a combat outpost. That's the place that we called home for the a little over 11 months that we were deployed in this specific area. So my squad was in charge of leading the patrol back, and this patrol consisted of a very large number of people. Uh, I'm not going to say the exact number just because of the whole vagueness that I want to keep with this. The walk was about, I'd say, less than a thousand meters from where we were to our cop that we stayed at. But in our area, it was all landmines and there were individual mud walls that sectioned off everybody's fields. We couldn't take roads because of the mines. We couldn't take easy paths because of the mines. So this thousand meters was a good seven, eight hour patrol just because of the fact that we had to go the hardest, difficult, most pain in the ass route you could think of. And me being a complete dick, I like to make everybody else's life miserable. So I made the route even harder than it needed to be is because that's just kind of the person I am. I like to screw with people. So we were walking through orchards and vineyards and canals. We climbed walls. And we were within an eyesight of our cop when we come up to this tree line. And it's got a canal. Not a canal. It's more of a ditch. But it had a stream of water running through. It was more of an irrigation canal. This canal was a very big blocking site. It completely blocked line of sight from our cop to any movement on the other side. That's how thick the, the bushes and tree line was. So we get up to the area. We are, we're pulling security. We're doing our minesweeper. We all have to walk in a single file line because of the landmines and everybody has to, the leader of each squad has to carry a minesweeper. The other team leader in my squad was leading. So he goes up to the canal first with his minesweeper, clears out a little area, scans it, goes over it a little bit. Essentially just making sure that it's completely clear and suitable for us to pass over. Keep in mind that these landmines are all Chinese knockoffs, so they're mostly plastic. The only metal in them are the blasting caps. So in order to spot those with a metal detector, you have to be extremely careful and good in order to, to figure it out. So the minesweeper goes and scans the, the canal, the wall, this opening that we've chopped through. And I'm sitting back there waiting for the other team leader to, to make his path through. So I move up to kind of help him keep an eye out on things. Minesweeper thinks he's got it all clear and just says, hey, it's clear, let's go. So the minesweeper jumps across the canal and makes it across. As a team leader, we carried, we usually would carry the stuff that our minesweeper would carry just so he wouldn't have to deal with his pack and the minesweeper because the minesweeping was not as easy as you'd think it would be. So the team leader that was getting ready to cross, he had a lot more gear, so he couldn't clear the, the canal with just a jump. He had to go down through it, across it, and then back up the other side. As he's going across, he gets stuck and drops to a knee. And as soon as he drops to a knee, he puts his knee on a landmine and it blows up. He's extremely lucky here because the landmine is wet, so a lot of the blasting powder on the inside didn't go off but it was enough to break his femur. We obviously didn't know that at the time, we just heard an explosion and I was probably three feet behind him. So me and the squad leader, we pull him out and he's saying all kinds of bad words and calling us names and stuff because he's in pain. And yeah, it sucks. So he 
he's getting pulled out and we call our senior medic up and he starts working on him. Surprisingly no blood. Everything was just it was just a quick punch and it it just fractured the bone. Nothing nothing major other than pain obviously. So I call my team up to go take an alternate route. So it was me and uh, four, five other people. I can't remember the exact number. We move down the canal and find another area that is semi-easy to cross that we can get across and set up an area of security so that we can call in for medevac, which is a helicopter, to uh, pick him up and take him to an aid station. My minesweeper, he goes through, clears it everything, and we all start jumping across. He makes it across, I make it across. My assistant team leader, who will come to play here in a few minutes, he made it across, my machine gunner made it across, and another assault uh, rifleman made it across. So we're setting security up. We have a big, uh, good open space of a field. We mine sweep it all out. He, our, our team, my team, I set him in position to provide security. This is kind of where the story gets crazy, kind of goes rapid fire, and it's going to be kind of hard to follow along with the, the events that happen now. One of the guys who goes, comes across, he's not a part of our unit. He's doing his own thing. I'm not going to say what he was doing or who he was, but he calls me over because I'm the team leader on the side and thinks he spots somebody watching us. One of my guys is at the crossing, uh, making sure everything's good and still secure over there. And as I walk over to check on, to see what this guy sees, I'm looking around. Uh, I, don't, I just see a guy, he's walking away. I'm not entirely sure what it was about. So I just sort of ignored it. I then start walking over to my, my guy who was pulling security on the canal to make sure other people could come across when they can come across. As I almost get there, one of the other guys who was attached to us that I'm not going to say about, he was carrying the gear of another guy who lost his leg earlier in the week. Uh, so he was carrying double the gear and was trying to cross the canal at almost the exact time as I was walking up towards uh, my, my guy. So he gets ready to cross and kind of falls into the canal and he hits a landmine. This landmine though was attached to a 10 pound barrel and I actually I don't know the way, 10 ish pound barrel of homemade explosive so the landmine set off this jug as well as the landmine so both explosions went off simultaneously this blows off his leg below the knee while this happens my friend who is watching the canal gets launched about 15 feet in the air I am about 10 feet away from him so it blows me onto the ground unconscious I have no clue how long I was unconscious for, but I immediately got up and took off running towards my friend. And one thing I do know is that my first aid abilities are, are second to none. I, I always paid attention to those classes. I would always get the top marks. I knew what I was doing. I, I love first aid just because I knew the severity of our job and I knew what could happen. And in this exact case, what did happen, where I could actually do first aid while concussed. So needless to say I had a pretty good uh, concussion head injury and so I ran over to my friend and immediately started providing first aid. He he had some holes. He, had, uh, he was bleeding pretty good and so the second nature of the first aid training obviously took over and working on a good friend of yours uh, first aid to make sure he does not die is one of the most stressful things you will ever ever hope to not ever do in your entire life. The senior medic who can do a lot more than I can was trapped on the other side of the canal working on this other guy so I was doing all of the work in uh, on this guy. While I was doing all this I was still yelling orders to my squad telling them to get into position to make sure everything was going well to pull security to set up a landing zone so that they a helicopter could come in and get all these casualties and not only was I yelling to my guys I had people on the other side who were in charge yelling at me to try to get information on what exactly was happening on my side of the canal without going into names or details this was not easy I did get my guy completely patched up I got his tourniquet on I got his his uh, pressure wound on his pressure bandage on all the while trying to talk to him so that he would not lose consciousness because I did not know the severity of his injury. As I'm sitting there with him, 
my squad had set up an LZ landing zone for a helicopter to come in and pick up all these casualties. The other two casualties made it across the canal and we got my friend onto the helicopter and they got sent to um, the, uh, the tier, I can't remember, level one, the aid station that they call it. It's like a hospital essentially, but they have each, they each have levels. I can't remember the levels exactly, but um, it's one of the, the higher level surgical centers that they have. For that, I got what is called an ARCOM with Valor. It's the Army Commendation Medal with Valor. It's a, a little V device that goes on the ribbon. Essentially, it's a higher tier of, let's call it, it's a valor, valorous act in a hostile situation under contact. But this only ends the very first half of the day. It was still daylight when this occurred. There's much more to this story for the rest of the day, but I think this deserves a secondary video. I will continue this next time. However, I hope this video kind of gives you an insight on what people in war go through, um, the craziness that happens, the stress that people go through. Kind of helps you understand why people who, who've been to combat, who've seen combat, don't come back the same. Things happen, bad things happen to friends, to, to people that you'd call brothers in, in, real, in your everyday occurrence life. This is a, not a good story. Luckily, everybody was okay. Uh, my friend got a few surgeries and he's okay, didn't lose anything. The guy who lost his leg, he is living a normal life, normal-ish life now. He has a prosthetic leg, but he is okay. Um, the guy who broke his femur, he is okay. He doesn't have any residual issues. So just keep that in mind when next time you talk to someone who is in combat, who is a veteran. While you may not agree with them as a person, you may not agree with the war that they fought, just understand that the things these people went through is it's un unimaginable. So until next time, hopefully there's a little less break between these videos now that I've kind of figured out how I want to structure these. Um, enjoy and share this video if you want. If you know people who are in, in the war and want to hear other people's experiences, I'm sure, I'm sure this will help. Thanks for watching.